this is what I was talking about with Facebook when we were trying to get people to understand that the church is not being relevant to the community. As you can see, as we walk down here, you got tons of people that are living on the streets. And the question is, where is the church? Why is it that we got so many They can only do so much. Their resources are so limited. Their resources are so limited. Now stand in front of me. And then just stand in front of me. Their resources are so limited. Everyone, I don't even know what he's saying to you right now. Bless you all. How y'all doing? All right. God bless you, sir. What are we filming? I'm a Trotter. I'm filming for trying to get more help and resources for the people that are down here on the streets and uh, trying to get our people off the streets because the church has just stopped. And they're they down here every day. Every day. Every day. Seven. Yes, sir. I'm an Uber driver, so I see this every day. And the church is solid. You know, we're taking in offerings, we're taking in, uh, we're taking in tons of money. We got churches on every corner, but we got people laying on the street. Daniel, where is your friend? Wondering what? Why is that so? Or do you have an idea why that's so? I don't need to know why it's so. It's because the people are not opening their heart. They're not seeing that the, that the Bible gives us verses over and over again about pleading the cause of the poor and the needy, and and the church is not doing it. You know, it's not a matter of wondering why is it so. It's a matter that it is so. It well, is so. Well, let me share this. Uh, I've been out here and I've been working with the population for over ten years, and one of the issues is there are churches that do come through, but they just don't have the experience on how to help a person go on through this type of scenario. Because they have uh, the persons who are invested in the church and haven't experienced it. But they have relatives that have experienced it. They have not experienced it secondhand because they know nothing about it. They say, well, let's take them to baloney sandwich diet. Let's take them to socks. Mm -hmm. But how did that help a person get off the ground? How did that help a person uh, not have to live on the street? Well, the, person is, the, the way we help the people get off the ground is we need transitional housing. I have a very good yeah. idea of what helps a person get off the ground because I used to be on the ground, but I'm not now. I used to I be was, also, sir. And obviously, but I'm not, not just with myself. Right. I've been on, been, I've been on the ground and been homeless with nine children. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, well, so you got, I know one, exactly. you, got, you got one up on me. I haven't did that one. You know, I, I know exactly how to well, get up off the ground. Well, you know how you somebody. did, but, but for other people, what I've learned in that 10 years is that everybody come up. There, there's a, a, as many people uh, as, as out here, there's as many stories on how of a person got to be out here. Of course, each individual story is different, mm -hmm. but it still don't give us, we can't keep standing by and allowing excuse after excuse of why we're not doing nothing. Not you know, change. and it's going to start with at least one thing. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Care packages. Thank you. That's what we need Thank more of. Thank People you. can't get those kinds of things on the streets. This gentleman, hey, if we partner with him and get more care packages, he can do better work here. That's what I've been telling y'all over and over again. The church is silent on this kind of issue. How am I going to keep myself clean when I'm on the streets? I don't have no soap, I don't have no teeth, I don't have thank no you, toothbrush, you, you, I don't have you. nothing. No, you know, and then yet nothing. we say we're doing the work of the ministry because we go to church on Sunday morning. We got a big church right down here at the, at the corner. Christ, to Christ the right. Cathedral. Christ Cathedral. There's a thick pair of socks in there, there's a chapstick. That have the buying power thank you. to, if they can't partner with this 
this ministry that's doing this, that's housing as many as they can house, there is buildings down here that are derelict and empty. They are empty. That you can renovate empty. And, and believe me, ain't no excuse for it. Because the fact remains is that many of them, I've seen them. They pull up in Mercedes. <laughs> they pull up in, 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 mm -hmm. in, in Cadillac Escalades. They pull it up in all these kinds of cars. And, and they bring funny. in tons of money into the church. Not but funny. why we got people still home? It's not funny. You know. But this man can't do it by himself. This man can't do it by himself. And these people have a right to have a good place to stay, a safe place to stay. These people have a right to be able to have a good Christmas and Thanksgiving. Many of you that are watching this by Facebook Live, y'all had Thanksgivings. These people, you know, some of them barely ate. But yet we go to church and we shout, we speak in tongue, but we're not doing no work of the ministry. No work of the ministry. This is what I see every day. But I'm one person. He's one person. It takes more than just us to deal with the stigma of this situation in every state. Every state. New Life Evangelistic Center is doing the best they can, but they getting fought politically. They getting even fought by some of the churches that don't even want these people out here. Well, if these people don't have nowhere to go, where are they gonna go? Where are they gonna go? What, what, where are they gonna live? Their privacy is trampled on by people passing by. Nobody wants to be looked at, mobbed at, and downed or judged because they're doing the best they can. And a lot of them have said over and over again, Apostle, how can I get on my feet when you need an address in order to even get a job? We don't have enough transitional housing. We don't have enough transitional housing. And, and, and we don't have enough programs. To help the people. All right, Apostle, also I want to share with you these signs. All of these signs they put on these poles are new. Yeah. There used to be a time when people could come and drop off uh, uh, some tithes and, 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 and things that people can use, some clothes and food. The city have decided that they, they, they cut off the supply for New Life uh, Evangelistic Center by way of putting up these signs to say a person could not even stop here. If you notice up the street, you see no cars is parked on this one block here. No car, but this police car. No. And that's not, <laughs> and, and that's part of the plan. If I was a policeman, I couldn't even do it. Right. Uh, I couldn't do it. I mean, even though I'm ordered to do it, I couldn't do it. Because guess what? It only takes a few tax dollars short, and then the very people that goes and patrol this area be without a job. And they, they'll be in this same situation. They uh, have so much dislike for helping another person that they have put these meters and those computer boxes out here for people to park. And then two weeks, and about a month later, they came back and took them off. Because they said, we don't want nobody to park on this. That's why you see the poles that are cut there. They have the big clear box where you slide your credit card. They, they removed it. That costs money to put that box here. It costs money to remove it. That mm -hmm. money could have went to these people here. But it went to keep this street bare, this one block. So the question is, what is our politicians doing about this? We just had this big election. You know, what do you expect these people to do? You know, if you want them to have a decent life, you don't want them to live on the street, then you got derelict buildings around here. The city has the money, the earmarks that comes into this city every year, comes to cities where you are at every year. And those monies are not going towards making sure there's programs to help the poor and needy. Christ said plainly, we're going to have the poor with us always. And it's our job to defend them and lift up a voice for them. That's right. And the Bible tells us that if we don't do that, then where is our faith? 
without works. They, I, I, I know what they're doing. They have just legislated for this man, man of God that's doing the best he can here. They legislated now that you can't even feed the poor and needy on the street. And it's an ordinance now that they will give you a fine citation. just for bringing food, a citation just for feeding the people. So what are they supposed to do? Starve and die on the street? Well, Before have, we wake up and say something, Go they ahead, have sir. to stop. They have to park two blocks away to bring some donations to this site here that can help a person in need. They used to be able to park right in front of it and take it up because the city have chose uh, to make this street here a no stopping zone to be able to cut off the traffic and hoping that this population is just decide to just get up and go somewhere else. But where would they get up and go that's not going to be cold? And the only reason why they come here, because of course they can get the help. They can get the resources. You have the resources of the library, but the library uh, have decided that it it has to operate as a library. It's not a shelter. It is not fair to the city of St. Louis that the St. Louis Public Library become a shelter. Uh, it's not fair to the citizens of the city of St. Louis that the city is not interested in providing shelter for people in need of. The library shouldn't have to provide shelter for a person. That's right. The library should provide information, literature, and education and that's that kind right. of stuff to help the citizens that's of this right. city. Right. And that's and why that's most of the people here, I find that they, they don't want to be filmed because they're getting tired of being exploited. Right. And monies come in and donations right. come in and they see none of it. There's not a shred of it. And, but then we broadcast how much we're doing so good we got channel 30 news right around the corner hello <laughs> no but they pass this up every day why y'all was getting dressed up and putting on your big hats and your suits that's right and standing in your pulpit that's right what causes you plead we have at least three mega churches in this state Three mega churches that's pulling in millions of dollars, millions of dollars a year. But we still got people homeless on the street. They're not providing transitional housing. They're not even providing care packages for people. It takes a gentleman like this that trusts in God, that may not have all of the financial resource backing that he needs in order to provide. That's why I'm telling y'all to send the donations. Or if you don't want to send a donation, send a care package. That's right. Because see, I don't want nobody playing games with me because they say, well, if I send a donation, he won't use it. Guess what? If you don't want to send the care package, send it by boxes. That's right. These people need it. That's right. People in your state need it. That's right. So I'm going to start exposing churches. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stand out in front of them. Because if you say you a man or woman of God, there's no excuse why I don't know how to help. You start by one coat, right. one blanket, right. one care package, right. one house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You start by those things, and that's how you change. That's how you change a situation. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the problem is is that too many folks want titles but don't want no work mm -hmm. behind the title. And I'm not going to be one of those ones that's going to work. I mean, that's going to have a title Amen. with no work behind it. Just keep on walking back. I've learned about what they're doing to this gentleman here. He writes the thing listen to him. And Larry Wright has been working diligently in community, trying to do what he can, but he can only do so much. If you don't want to send donations to GHMI, then send it to New Life Evangelistic Center. They're doing what the other churches are silent about. And they're starting with blankets and sheets and clothing and various things that these people need. But they are only one source that's being saturated with the issue of poverty. Poverty is a problem of the church. 
It's not a problem of government. It's not the government responsibility to take care of the poor and needy. The commission was given to us as the people of God. But all we do is we don't recognize any of this until it hit home to our house. Because if truth be told, we are all one paycheck away from being homeless. Amen. Amen. One paycheck away from being home. What's your name? Uh, I've been trying to get, sir, I've been trying to get people. Churches, I went to them. I tried to get them. I say, hey, don't want to give money. Give us the care package. Give us, the, give us at least that resource. You know what I'm saying? That'll be an impact on the people that are on the streets because they can't get toiletries like, you know what I'm saying? And if we can provide that, that'll lighten the load on them at least somewhat. Well, what I, what I'm pushing for in the city of St. Louis uh, with the churches and those that are interested in just loving on and helping another is people need a place to live. Yes, they do. Our organization is Brooklyn Street Ministry and we are in the business of providing a guest house experience which is a transition house but it's a smaller unit that only holds five to six people and people need an opportunity to be able to transition back into the main fold of society. Yeah, and we want right. to provide that. And the days of moving people into a big structure building like the housing project, them days are long gone. They didn't work then, they don't work now. People need a smaller unit. They need units that can be a functioning unit to the community, be an asset to the community, and not a liability to the community. What happened in New Life here is, through the structure of it and through some of the oppression around it, it, they have labeled it a liability to the community and that's why they have, are so down on closing it. They had cut the street off. They did everything but block the street to keep persons off this street and to keep people from uh, contributing and coming by to help another. That's just where we have come to at this point in society in St. Louis. So what I want to do is encourage people to Think in terms of property. We have property. We have family members that have uh, property. We say, hey, that first floor over there can be used to house three to four people. How can we get involved to be a part of that? Uh, the day of bringing things down to people so they can continue to live on the street, those days are long gone because after I leave for the day or the pastor will leave for the day, these people still have to stay. And they're going to be oppressed. Uh, by the downtown neighborhood association to get them off the streets, get them off in front of their place, out, out of their, out, out of the view of their window, and they have to deal with that. While you and I are gone, they'll still be dealing with that. So we are in the process of hosting a symposium on the subject of toxic charity. Toxic charity is what this neighborhood have experienced for the last twenty to thirty years, and that's persons bringing. Um, charitable items and bring a charity down, but, but it don't empower, it don't empower people to change their situation. Amen. Amen. The transitional housing, the guest house experience, uh, our organization, we provide free haircuts, we do haircuts tomorrow over at Christ uh, Cathedral in the basement. A haircut can empower a person to want to get on their feet and get a job and move forward in life. You know, uh, this time of year, uh, a pair of winter socks, a thick pair of socks can empower a person to be able to get on their feet and do some things they need to do. Yeah. You know, uh, that's what I'm pushing for now, is bringing efforts that empower the people. People need to be empowered. It's like I said, we, we need transitional housing or guest housing, like you said. And the only way we can do that is through donations. I mean, the housing is there. I mean, I can get the financing. But you need money for the appraisal. You need a repair cost of anything that maybe need fixed up on the property, and that takes. You got to have a little bit of seed money to do that. So I'm asking you guys to open your heart. I mean, I mean, I know before I was doing this out of my studio, and everybody thought that it wasn't nothing. 
But I told you I was coming to the streets. And I'm going to keep continuing to come to the streets. And I'm going to keep partnering with gentlemen like this. Because I'm going to put it in your face now. Because, see, a lot of times we silent on things or what the church needs to do. So do I have to come to each person's church and stand out in front of them and say, okay, now look at the homeless. Look at the drunk. Look at all of these people that are in having need. issues and in need, and you're silent about it. Because this is where we're at now. Because the time is now. This is the harvest. Jesus said, truly the harvest is one of but the labors of few. You feed any of these people, or you give these people a home for they they will listen to you about your Lord. But if you ain't doing nothing for them, they tired of hearing the rhetoric. They tired of hearing you come down and say, Jesus loves you. Well, Jesus only loves through your hand. Jesus only loves through your voice. Jesus only loves through you putting yourself in harm's way. Because, I mean, right now, it's illegal for me to be standing right here. Right or wrong? This is City Ordinance, according to the sign that's posted here. Uh, you cannot stand here on the sidewalk. Wow. But other sidewalks in the city, you can. But in downtown St. Louis, though, local street, they say, no, you can't obstruct, uh, obstruct traffic on this sidewalk. Wow. And it's just a, another avenue to dagger at the mm -hmm. homeless because they're not interested in helping them, they're interested in just moving away and going somewhere else. And, and then, how they get there is... Then the most pitiful part is they give these poor people citations that can't, they don't even have a place to stay. How in the world are they going to afford a citation? We work with the Arch Defenders. Arch Defenders is a uh, program of, of attorneys. Uh, they housed in uh, Christ Cathedral. And they help people. We call these crimes of poverty. If a person get a citation for public urination, if you don't have a place to live, you're obviously going to have a place to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so those are crimes of poverty. <laughs> if you have no money and you have no way of making things happen to do things for yourself, and so you see a crowd of people going to a blues game and, and you ask a few people for some change, they call that panhandling. That's a crime of poverty. These people have nothing and these people have plenty. They have enough to go and it's as cold as it is outside. They got it. They got enough to go sit in a room with nothing but ice, right. <laughs> and have a good time. Where it's people out here without gloves and hats and things on, and so it makes sense for this guy to to, to take his burden to the gentleman walking past and say, "Hey, sir, you have a few dollars you can spare me." The city of St. Louis decided that was a crime, and there are people who have have citations. They have tickets. They have to go and pay a penalty for that. Now, if this person is, is needing money to be able to get a cup of coffee or whatever their next need is, then where are they going to get the money to be able to pay that citation? That's right. So that's another avenue of we can lock them up now because wow. he didn't come to court three times. He didn't pay his fine. And so, we given, uh, uh, so we, we, we're giving them permission to just lock up the homeless at will. Well, that's just, wow. that's just the government's way of having wow. free labor. Because then they'll stand before the judge with no money. And the judge said, well, you could do 30 hours of community service, right. 90 hours of community service, 120 hours of community wow. service. So then now they got free labor. That's the biggest injustice ever, ever, ever made in the history of man. They just got through going through a suit where they was offering people uh, oh, the, uh, the opportunities to do community service before due process. This person has not even been prosecuted. They have not had their day in court, but you offer them opportunity to uh, waive their penalty, but they have not even been found guilty. And that's what the Archway Defenders are working on. Uh, and so there's a lot of programs out here that help support the homeless. And like the brother here, the apostle here, he has a program. Uh, I know the Archway Defenders, I, I know that they are in need because they're working with this population. Uh, if you look over there, there there's a two officers, got a gentleman on the ground over there. I'm pretty sure whatever his situation is, is probably a minute city ordinance. And, and, and that's sad that we leak, we, we're saying it's illegal to be poor. <laughs> And you know what, Apostle, these days I come out now, I'm meeting more and more young people age 17, 18 years old. You know, 
doesn't have <laughs> how they going to at any time be able to afford any kind of ticket or legal now, obviously support. that officer writing a ticket on the on the, on the seat of that how is this gentleman going to pay that ticket how's this gentleman going to pay that ticket I don't know that's a question you know, can't pay to catch the bus to go find a job how are you going to pay for it Right. Well, that, that, that's the that's the that's the question that always leads you to to hey, what do a people that don't have nothing and you telling them they got it? It's just like they can magically create something out of nothing, and now he's making it illegal to be poor in this country. We got. A new administration coming in that's saying, okay, we're gonna make it even more harder on them. We we gonna take what they already had and we're gonna take that away also. <laughs> and how can you get the light and making the burden even more heavier on the people that's already burned. And then, this is not the responsibility of the government. This is the responsibility of the church. It's our fault this is happening. Because we're being solved. We're, many of you are going to service today and ignoring what I'm saying and Lord God is writing it on your judgment card. That's why he uprooting pastors. Because they don't want to do what they're supposed to do. You know? So we got to we gotta do something about this. We got to change what's going on in this state and in this nation where it becomes illegal. You know? Look at this. They got signs such as this on the no stopping or standing no, wait. on street or curb. At no street or curb. For information on contribution, co contributing food and clothing, and personal, personal items, call 314-621-5900. Now, do any of those resources now, ever come to these people? Come by now, these officers are going to jump down on them. Watch how fast the officers come to But look at this, y'all. Look at all that. Pan, pan down there. Look at this. How y'all doing? God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I got a knife in my truck, I think. You to go up there and get a knife out of my truck so the people have something to cut that pie and stuff with.
you said one of the things that we do, we we encourage people when they do get those citations to take them over to the archway for better to help take care of them. They'll take care of them. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And so the name of the program is Archway Defenders. Archway Defenders. You know about that, brother? Archway Defenders there. Whatever side takes, they'll take care of it for you over there. How are you, sir? How are you, sir? Yeah, because they, you know, after a while, after they, they want it to, because what he had was a public urination. I'm pretty, pretty sure that's what it was. But if he had nowhere to live with him, that man sat here and told him to go to the library. The library opened up at 10 o'clock. The library do not open up until 1 o'clock on Sunday. And he's, in fact, that it don't open up at 1 o'clock. Why would he tell this gentleman he can go there at 10 o'clock? <laughs> when we can all look at the library and see that it's closed, and it will not open up until 1. But he told oh, him he can, it opens up at 10. Wow. Good morning. Good morning, lady. Uh, <laughs> he said, you can go right down there. You can't go down there, it's closed. If you go down there, you're going to do the well, same thing you're going to do around the corner. The question <laughs> the city got the resources uh, to open the, up something. To support a party here. City Hall, they got to keep, the, uh, keep the city off. They right. got plenty of bathrooms in there. To support a party here. You don't want the people to urinate on the street? You know, you got ladies out here that, you know. Unlike the gentleman that that's off, they can't just jump in their car and go to a bathroom. These people have no car, and then they have nowhere to go to go to the bathroom. That's true. You can't go down to one of these establishments on Washington Avenue because you're not a patron of it. God bless you. So you all, let me see where the problem is. And we see what we need. We see why we need it. You know that I'm just not playing around and and not posting this out every week. Now every other day. And just because. So let's make a change, y'all. Let's, let's do what God has called us to do, what he really called us to do. This is the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach Amen. the gospel. I'm going to uh, get ready to leave in a minute, but this Amen. is the key here. We have to come out and get to know people. The reason that St. Patrick's and New Life and these other institutions that are commissioned here to help the homeless are failing in their charge, they have not taken the time out to know them. How can you help somebody you have not introduced yourself to or be friends? Yes. That's one of the things Christ did, was he went down and he befriended people. Of course. And that's how he was able to be so healthy. He was a community leader. He was a community leader. And he came. He became a part of that community. Amen. And that's Amen. what we're not doing today. Nobody wants to come out here and rub shoulders and get to know people. Because if I get to know you, that means if I hear such a horrific story about your life, I might have to do something about it. I don't want to do nothing about it, so I'd rather keep your business, your business, and my business, my business. And we'll just wave at each other. Nobody knows anybody. And so I don't never, my heart don't feel tugged to do anything more than hand you a bologna sandwich or a pair of socks and go about my business. Mm -hmm. So the main thing is that we have to come out, we have to get to know the population that we are commissioned to serve. Amen. And that's one of the things that I do. I do a street ministry. I'm out here at least seven to eight hours. Uh, three to four days a week. There's not many of the persons out here that I don't know uh, that do not know me. And that's one of the key to succeeding in helping another person is getting to know, know one another. We have to get to know one another. Apostle, and I want to encourage you to do the same thing. We have to get to know them. We should know, we should know persons by names. Not just faces and situations, but by names. By names, because then it becomes more personal. A lot, a lot of times people avoid coming down here you know, how are you? Uh, a lot of times people come, avoid coming I, down. I here. got some prayer kids. I'm gonna go down there and get. Okay. One more. Okay. Right. A lot of times people avoid coming down here because they don't want to know the people person. They have to because do something about then, it. Then, I gotta do something about it. Then you gotta do something about it. I don't want to do nothing about it. When you coming down here, <laughs> you you in a person's face, then now that person is on your heart, and the Lord is not gonna allow you to shuck that responsibility. 
and do nothing. And do nothing. Do nothing about it. You know what I'm saying? It's something like it's like seeing a kid in the middle of the street. Your heart is gonna tug, you're gonna you want you're gonna have to do something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why we are a grassroots ministry. Ministries like his and mine are grassroots. We're not no big charitable organization like Salvation Army that sees all these people on the street and don't do nothing about it. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 March of Dimes, see these people with kids on the street, don't do nothing about it. You know, all these large charitable organizations that we funneling millions of dollars to, the millions are not coming to those that really need the millions. That's why we're grassroots. That means whatever we get, we bring. It's not holding nothing for ourselves because we believe in the, the words of Jesus. You know, that he said, you want to be great in the kingdom of heaven? Become a servant. The Bible tells us that Jesus took on no reputation for himself, but took on the form of a servant. So this is what you guys need to know that are watching this by Facebook Live. I need your help. This gentleman needs your help. These people need your help. Because you can't deny this. And this is not just happening in this state. It's in every state. They needing clothing. They need, they, they need like the gentleman said, they need transitional housing and, and, and uh, all these things they they are needing now not not you saying within yourself uh, I'll do it next year or I'll, I'll start next week these people are in situations now and it's time for us to get to know these people on the streets how can we say we're doing a great commission? when the commission is right here and we don't know none of the people that's here. God bless you. This is Apostle Trotter, GHMI. Again, go to our website, ghmi.org. ghmiffff.org. ghmiffff.org. And you can see this video and other things that we're doing in community. We're not just here downtown St. Louis. We are out in St. Charles County. But this is a stigma problem everywhere. And, sir, tell them, give them your information. Well, our organization is Broken Key Ministry. You can go online and find us at www.brokenkeyministry.com. Uh, you can see the services that we provide. We welcome uh, everybody to have a heart and a burden to come out and help this population uh, to join us in our efforts of helping people to transition off the street. Uh, we just want to love on them like Christ loved on us and help people to get to their next step in life their next level in life. Uh, we believe that there's no no soul should be lost. No person have to be left behind in this effort. And we just count on the Lord to just provide for us, keep us strong so we can keep coming out here on a daily basis and, and be of assistance. And Obama! While you may not be able to come out and do and put in the hours that we put in, you can surely find a way to support us to continue the good work that we're doing out here in the streets of St. Louis. Man, Amen. pleasure meeting you, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And we're we're going to be partnering together, yeah. right where you have my information and <laughs> the we're website. Gonna be, and we're going to be going to that website because of, I don't believe in just partnering in word, but I also believe in partnering resources. You know, whatever we get, we're going to share with this ministry. You know, so he can continue to work. You know, because we believe in the care packages, but we also believe in the transitional housing. God bless you. We're broadcasting again. Some time later. Bye-bye now. All right.